everything wrong with the Lincoln administration from a libertarian perspective, the abolition of slavery is credited as Lincoln's most notable accomplishment, freeing four million slaves through the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment. No libertarian disagrees that slavery needed to end, but could it have ended without a bloody war? There has been renewed skepticism over the years about the Emancipation Proclamation's effectiveness, its strategic significance, and the shift towards an anti-slavery motive to end slavery until later in the war. It was a wartime measure, was inherently hypocritical since it considered slaves as property, and only freed slaves in states that were in rebellion. Lincoln's evolving stance on abolition blended moral opposition to slavery with practical moderation. Lincoln's initial preference was for gradual emancipation and shipping the slaves back to Africa. Lincoln's belief in a moderate approach to ending slavery was more of a strategic question than a moral one. As late as February 1865, he was still holding forth an offer of compensation as an enticement for the Confederates to lay down their arms, and numerous records from the final months of his life suggest an intention of pursuing colonization in earnest after the cessation of hostilities. Lincoln assumed office ready to make a stunning concession to the secessionists, having endorsed and likely helped to orchestrate the congressional adoption of the last-ditch Corwin Amendment a provision that constitutionally affirmed the legality of slavery and devolved all jurisdiction over it to the individual states. When Sojourner Truth thanked Lincoln for being the first president to act in the interest of the slaves, he answered quite simply that he was the only one who ever had such opportunity. Had our friends in the South behaved themselves, I could have done nothing whatever. A staggering toll of death and destruction amassed in intervening years, at least 750,000 soldiers lost their lives during the war, according to the most recent estimates, with a majority occurring on the Union side. Lincoln's administration vastly expanded the scope of wartime executive power through both his conscious legal decisions and the examples they set for his presidential successors. Subsequent presidential uses and abuses of those same powers, often explicitly cited to Lincoln's authority and celebrated reputation, accordingly fall within the scope of his legacy. The most salient example may be found in Lincoln's unilateral suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, beginning shortly after the outbreak of hostilities in April 1861, while Congress was out of session. To raise money to fight the Confederacy, Lincoln pushed for and won passage of an income tax, and a year or so later established the Internal Revenue Bureau to collect what was owed. Though Lincoln's tax was struck down by the Supreme Court in 1895, the 16th Amendment, passed in 1913, created the income tax we endure today. Historians and legal scholars credit the 16th president, a moderate Republican, with laying the foundation for progressive taxation enforced by the tax man. Lincoln's humility regarding his role in ending slavery, as illustrated in his response to Sojourner Truth, emphasizes the serendipity and pragmatism of his leadership but libertarians wonder whether there may have been less bloody, more pragmatic, and more market-based approaches to end slavery rather than a bloody civil war and pernicious income tax.